Yo, it's Jason and Vivian, and I'm just gonna say it. We had the perfect trip in Osaka. The moment we arrived, you know it's food time. There is a reason why Osaka is known as the street food capital of Japan. <laughs> but the signage oddities are what always gets me. I've never seen anything quite like this. It's so visually stimulating that even Spider-Man crossed the multiverse for some clams? <laughs> so after food, we went up any towers we can to check the view out. Japan's urban cityscape is one of the best because you'll always find a pocket of traditional mixed in with the modern. After catching the most gorgeous sunset on the first day at Osaka's highest skyscraper, the next day, we awoke to our main purpose, our true purpose. Here we go! Super Nintendo World. Now, we've been to Disneyland countless of times, but I don't think it ever hit me quite as hard as Super Nintendo World did the moment we got warped into the Mushroom Kingdom. Seeing a part of my childhood come to life into a theme park was a tear-shedding moment. We pounded on question mark blocks, stomped on Koopas, got bombed by a babong, rode on Yoshi, and even raced against the Bowser game. By the end of the day, I had such a good time that we took a photo with Mario and Luigi. We even bought the commemorative photo, something we usually never do at theme parks. But it was well worth it. During our final few hours, it started to rain. Rain usually puts a damper on most people's day, especially if they're on vacation. But not for us. It was the perfect way to wrap our trip, and I couldn't ask for anything better. We immediately went to Dotonbori, and it was all set up for the perfect shots. The sea of umbrellas, the uneven concretes, the puddle reflections from the neon signs. I can see why a lot of my street photography friends love Osaka now. It's definitely rough around the edges, but its grittiness is its true vibes. It's definitely a sight to behold. Well, that's it for my cinematic. If you're interested in our full itinerary breakdown, let's chat in a bit. If not, I'll catch you in our next vlog. Peace. Hey, thanks for watching my short Osaka movie. This is going to be an itinerary chat detailing what we did. So hopefully this will help you plan your trip in Osaka. So yeah, we had a perfect time in Osaka. Technically spread across three days, but can easily be done in two. Day one, you can hit up Dotonbori and Shinseki for all the food and sightseeing. And day two, you can spend the day at Super Nintendo World with possibly time left over. Two days is enough for Osaka, in my opinion, and you can easily be in Kyoto either before or after, since they're both in the Kansai Prefecture. It's one stop apart on the bullet train, so plan that however you will, especially if you are using the Japan Rail Pass. Since they're both so close to one another, you can bundle it in one trip, Kyoto for all the traditional temple and shrines, and Osaka for all the food and Super Nintendo World. For us personally, we went from Tokyo, took a 9 a.m. bullet train, and we were there in Osaka a little before noon. After we got in, we went straight to our hotel to leave our luggages there, so I'll start with that first. We stayed at the Mimaru Hotel, the Shinsai Bashi East. Not sponsored, we chose this place primarily because it was within walking distance to a lot of the food and photo spots that we wanted to hit up, and it's also convenient to grab a train there since we're near a couple of stations. We were staying there with three other friends, so total of five people. I think the room that we book is like a family apartment. It's super comfortable. Two rooms, uh, one room with two beds and the other room is a tatami style with a bunk bed. And you can fold out like two other additional futon as well. I highly recommend sleeping on the futon if you haven't tried it yet. I got some of the best sleep that I've had 
in a very long time. So the book that we room has one bath, but two toilets, which is great for so many people. And the toilet that's with the bathroom, they're actually separated. The toilets, it's, 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 it's in its own room and it's separated by two sinks and then the bathroom. So multiple people can get ready at the same time. After we dropped off our stuff, we headed to Dotonbori for lunch. It's the iconic street food spot with the canal and the neon signs. So you definitely want to be coming here, especially at night. You might have seen photos of the Glico Running Man sign and people posing with it. That's the spot 100% you gotta go. I suggest spending the daytime eating. Nighttime would be the best for photo opportunities. As you saw from my movie, the difference between day and night is quite drastic. If you're a photographer, I suggest bring an ultra wide angle lens, something like a 16 to 35 and expose for the highlights of the sign and you'll get some really nice images. Bonus, if it rains, you'll be super lucky. The wet floors and the neon sign reflection is just mwah, perfect. And even if it's not raining and you can only be there during the daytime, the wacky signages alone are still really fun to look at. Osaka truly does have this laid back vibes, much, much different from the businessy uh, side of Tokyo and way less hectic than Kyoto. My street photography friends describe Osaka the best. It's like a time capsule that's perpetually stuck in the 90s. Lots of retro vibes. You're just gonna have, you're gonna have a good time there, trust. But yeah, food. Honestly, I don't have any specific recommendations. There are a ton of stalls, so just hop in line for whatever looks good or smells good. A long line is usually a telling sign that it's good, so make sure to bring some cash as well. So after a quick snack in Dotonbori, we actually walked over to Shinsekai, which is about 20 minutes away from Dotonbori. Uh, street food-wise, their offerings, they're pretty much the same. You'll find a lot of similar stuff from Dotonbori in Shinsekai, so it might be a little bit repetitive unless there's a specific restaurant you want to go to in that area. For us, we went to this restaurant at night where you can fish your own food. Literally, you just grab a fishing rod, get some bait, and you can catch your own fish to eat if you're comfortable with that. The catch is you have to pay for whatever it is you catch. You cannot catch a fish and release it if you accidentally caught an expensive one. But once you catch it, the staff will come by and ask you how you want it. It's a very experiential thing really catered to tourists. And the one advice that I have is I wouldn't recommend fishing on an empty stomach. I don't think we're eating dinner tonight. Now, if you have someone in your group that can't eat seafood, but they're tagging along, they do have chicken and beef option at this restaurant, but it was okay. Again, like I mentioned, street food wise, Shinseka and Dotonbori have very similar street food. If you only have time to go to one, I would just suggest to go to Dotonbori. Otherwise, Shinseka is another iconic photo spot because you get all the quirky signages that has leading lines to the Tenkaku Tower in the middle. During the time we were there, two unfortunate things happened. One, the tower is under renovation. It's hard to see the construction during the day, which is nice, but it's quite lacking as a night view since it won't light up at night. Maybe things will be different for you depending on when you watch the video. Uh, but the second thing, the second unfortunate thing was that the Pufferfish restaurant here has shut down permanently, which is really sad. I'm super bummed about that. It had that iconic Pufferfish lantern balloon that you may have seen in some of the other photos. But yeah, it's shut down. It does not light up at night. Making night photography here. Oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually super bummed about that. I guess you could say my trip wasn't perfect after all. Anyways, as long as you take the photo during daytime, it'll be, it'll be perfect. So in the movie, we caught sunset at the Abenos Harukas. I, I think that's how you pronounce it. I do apologize if it's not, but it's apparently Osaka's highest skyscraper. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, there is a free viewing spot in the middle. Obviously, it's not gonna be as high, but if you need to save a bit of money, but you still wanna see some type of view, that's a good compromise. The paid one, of course, takes you way higher and it's worth it, in my opinion, since you get to walk around and get a 360 view of Osaka. And if you squint hard enough, you can actually see Osaka Castle from here. But don't worry, I have another observation deck for you if you want to see Osaka Castle from a distance. The view will be so much better. But yeah, sunset was really nice here. And if it's not too cold, there is an outdoor cafe that you can chill at and watch the sunset as well. Now, if you do plan on visiting an observation deck anywhere, I would suggest looking at forecasts first before going up because it's not worth going up 
if it's gonna be a super cloudy rainy day. So that was our first day. These next other things you can do a few of, if not most on day one, if you want to. Uh, best to do them during the day and then go to Dotonbori or Shinsekai at night. Now I technically did these on my third day. We were gonna leave in the morning, but I knew it was gonna rain. So we stuck around to photograph Dotonbori in the rain at night. As you saw. Anyway, I highly recommend going to Namba Yasaka Shrine. It's the spot with the lion shaped head and it's pretty dope. I've never seen anything like it and it's probably one of my top favorite photo spots. Really easy to get there and once you walk in, you can't miss the lion. You take your shot, give your prayers, and then you can bounce. And if you want more traditional temples and shrines during your time in Osaka, there's also the Shitenoji Temple. Now, we personally didn't go because we saw very similar pagoda type structures in other spots of Japan, especially if you are going to or already went to Kyoto on the same trip. Going to extra temples and shrines here might feel a little too repetitive. Otherwise, yeah, swing by, those two would be great choices. And the other traditional structure would be the Osaka Castle. Definitely iconic, you gotta go. Now, I will say I'm someone who likes to see the iconic thing from a distance rather than be in it. So in my opinion, the best spot to see Osaka Castle from a distance is if you go to the Osaka Museum of History. It's right next to the NHK broadcasting station. You can't miss it. I believe you have to go up to the highest floor, but it's super easy to find. The only thing is once you do get to the view, the glass heavily reflects the surroundings, so it will be hard to take a photo dead on. But there are a couple of corners in that same area to shoot from where you don't see the glass reflection. By the way, yes, there is an admission to go up. It's technically for the museum itself, so after the view, you can actually make your way down to each floor to learn about the history of Osaka. I believe it's 600 yen only for the Museum of History alone, but you can get a bundle deal for 1,000 yen, which lets you enter the Osaka Castles exhibition as well. So it's completely up to you. Of course, spending time at both of these museums will take up time, but if you're a history buff, it might be worth going. I personally bought the bundle deal, which I kind of regret. Like I said, I'd rather be looking at the iconic spot from a distance rather than being in it. So to maximize my yen that I've already spent, I just walked up to the castle for a bit just to see the view, which is another observation deck on its own. But as you can see from there, you don't really see much else. That and it was a cloudy day. But like I mentioned earlier, there are exhibits to see inside of the castle. Again, if you're a history buff, it will be very interesting. But do know that photography and videography are not allowed in the middle section of the castle. But it's perfectly fine to do those at the observation deck. But the surrounding area of the castle is actually pretty cool. It's kind of like an open public park. If you want to spend some time walking around, that's completely free. And you can even ride in these golden boats around the moat if you want to, but that is a paid attraction. But it is free to look and it does look pretty cool. Next up is the Umeda Sky Building. This one's a little further out from the rest of the list. It's actually really close to Osaka Station, so it might be worth dropping by really quickly if you are already near the area. If not, you can largely just skip this. The only cool thing is the leading line escalator shot, which is a really, really dope spot, by the way. Otherwise, after riding up the escalator, you can pay to go up even higher for another observation deck. Might be cool, but like I mentioned earlier, just make sure to double check the weather before paying to go up. For me personally, on that particular day, the clouds rolled up for the rain, so I didn't even bother. Again, it was just the escalator shot that I was after anyway, and it worked out really well. Transportation. Now, before I move on to Super Nintendo World, I just want to comment on the transportation really quickly. Like most of Japan, Osaka is actually really easy to navigate around. You can either ride taxis, buses, or trains. And for us, we mostly did the trains and utilized Google Map. The only difference I felt was unlike Tokyo, where if you miss a train, there will be another one coming in a few minutes. Osaka trains, if you miss one, you could be waiting close to 10 minutes for another. So just keep that in mind, the trains don't run as frequent as Tokyo. All right, so let's talk about Super Nintendo World. So even though the ones in the States are opening up, I'd still highly recommend going to the one in Japan. Theme park experiences in Japan is at a whole nother level. We've been to several different Disney parks around the world, but by far the best experiences 
were always the ones in Japan. It's an indescribable feeling. Trust me, if you've been to anyone around the world, definitely come to Japan and compare. I guarantee you the experience is much different. But yeah, in case you didn't know, Super Nintendo World is located inside of Universal Studios like all of its counterparts. USJ is in Osaka and it's a bit out of the way from the main stuff. So when you go, just make sure you go really early. And since the demand for Super Nintendo World is crazy, we recommend getting the Express Pass. Otherwise, you need to get a time entry ticket for your entire party, which is located in the middle of the park. And this time entry ticket lets you into Super Nintendo World at a certain time. You cannot just waltz right in. And keep in mind, these tickets can run out if you don't get them early. The reason why they do this is because you can imagine the demand to go to Super Nintendo World is pretty high. But once you get inside, you can stay as long as you want. But if you want to leave, you may need to get another time entry ticket. Now, especially for those of you who aren't going to pick up an express pass, you want to come early again because that way you get to secure your time entry ticket to enter Super Nintendo World. But we highly recommend getting the express pass that includes the Mario Kart ride because it will also include a time entry ticket to Super Nintendo World. Not only did that give us a peace of mind that we will actually go in, but we don't have to rush. Now, there are different tiers at different pricing of the express passes, so make sure to pick the one with Mario Kart and at the price that you're comfortable with. The Express Pass is basically like a fast pass, but with a list of rides and a time that you can ride them without waiting in line. It's particularly good if you're going with a big group and you want to ride all the stuff together. But the Express Pass with the Mario Kart ride will already include the time entry to Super Nintendo World, so you don't have to go pick one up. This will save you a lot of time and you can probably end your day earlier here from Super Nintendo World and move on to something else if you want to. Now for us, we chose to stay until night just because we had such a great time and the view at night of Super Nintendo World is really, really nice. I highly recommend staying as long as you can for the lights to turn on. Now at the start of Super Nintendo World, you have a chance to buy a power-up band. It's not necessary, but it will enhance the experience. Basically, if you play any of the recent Mario games, it's a very similar concept. You can collect coins and stickers throughout the park with a leaderboard for the day. And to collect coins and stickers, there are certain objectives you need to complete, whether it be punching blocks or participating in mini games. Certain mini games also has keys that you can collect. Three keys will allow you to play the Bowser Jr.'s mini game, and it's pretty cool. It uses your shadow projected onto the screen, and you just flail around to defeat the enemies on the screen. Now again, the power-up band is not necessary unless you want to play the mini games around the park. Otherwise, you don't really need it for the main rides, the Mario Kart and the Yoshi ride. Now, the Mario Kart ride. It is an AR experience. You wear this Mario cap, which you'll get while you line up, and then you attach the AR goggles onto the cap once you hop into the ride. You have a steering wheel, which you can use to steer yourself into the item boxes, so you can get shells to blast at the Bowser gang. Of course, there will be a score at the end that gets tallied up to see how you rank against the other players in your cart. The cart seats four people at a time, and you get taken through a medley of Mario Kart stages, so it will be familiar if you play any of the iterations of the game. Now, for my personal review, I loved it. I loved it so much. The only thing that I would say about the ride is that the AR was a little too immersive, where I was more focused on what's happening on a screen, trying to throw shells, rather than seeing the actual physical set design of the ride. But that can be easily rectified, just ride it again without playing the AR, which at the end of the night, the queue will be much, much shorter, and there are single rider options as well for even faster queues. So highly recommend go twice, play the AR the first time around, and the second time just enjoy the ride going through the tunnel. Now the other ride is the Yoshi ride and this one is a slow ride but it's really nice because you get this nice panoramic view of the park facing Peach's castle. Highly recommend going on this around sunset because the view and the colors will be just perfect. Next, let's talk about the food at Super Nintendo World. The great thing about going with five people was that we all got different themed dishes to share, especially if you want to try all the desserts. 
you're gonna need some help. Again, I don't personally have any hard recommendations. Just pick the ones that seem the most appealing to you. If you're going by yourself or with a smaller group of friends, it's also theme park food. So just kind of keep that expectation like right here okay <laughs> it won't wow your taste buds though i will say it tastes better than most theme park food that i've had but it's there to wow your eyesight and it definitely satisfies but if you're a fan of anime depending on what's the hype anime at the time there are special 4d shows and merchandise at the time of us going they were really focused on jujutsu kaisen so we got the 4d experience show and the theme food and the uh gojo popcorn bucket <laughs> Oh, and speaking of which, I forgot to mention that the superstar bucket that our friend Josh got, it freaking lights up. It's pretty damn cool. All right, well, that was my perfect 48 hours in Osaka. Hopefully this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of a travel video like this. I know it's not the ultimate travel guide to Osaka or anything like that. There are plenty of that on the YouTube, but it's more of a personal recommendation and a review of what we did. So hopefully it provided a deeper look at some of the areas that you too might be interested in checking out. And if you guys want to support the channel, you can do so via a super thanks or simply stick around and listen to what my sponsor Squarespace has to say. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful websites. No coding knowledge whatsoever. Perfect for people like me because I just want to make YouTube videos for you guys and not have to worry about coding my entire website. Simply just select one of their templates to get started. Every aspect is easily customizable with their drag and drop feature. Whether you're in need of a portfolio, an e-commerce store, or even a simple blog, design it with Squarespace. Use my link down below to test it out. And when you're ready to launch your first website or domain, use my code Jason Vong to save 10% off. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.